Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Lucas here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are doing great. Today I wanted to do a quick video about shopping for soft synths or VST plugins, VST instruments, whatever you want to call it. So I've been doing music for a while and I thought it might be useful because I get this question all the time, you know, what, what synth should I get as my first uh, purchase, that kind of thing, when you know you're ready to get out of just the stock included plugins that you have in your DAW and you decide that you're going to spend some money, invest in some software synths, it could be for keys, for synths, for drums, bass, any of those things. So I'm gonna essentially talk about some things that I look for when making those purchases and I really hope that I'm able to save you some time and money with this because a lot of this stuff I wish I had known about it going into it because I've wasted a lot of money on things that I didn't need. And I'm also gonna talk about some particular ones that I find to be very, very powerful and very user friendly so maybe there'll be good suggestions for some of you that are looking to purchase your first synth so the first thing that i'm just going to jump into so just as a loose recommendation a lot of people ask me you know what synths should i get for like keys pads uh, leads and things like that i found this one you he hive 2 to be extremely user friendly so here's there's a couple things that I'm looking for that this one really excels at. So first of all, it's got a great interface. If you're learning how to dial in synths and how to program from, you know, you're going to have to learn what all these knobs do and how synthesis works. This one would be a really good one to start with. And it also has a fantastic preset browser, which is a huge one for me because I like to browse through different presets in the middle of a session and it has great sounds included, which is also, an, you know, so, so we want a good browser, good favorites, like tagging categories system here, good category system, and good sounds included, right? So that's huge if you're, if you're buying a synth, you want it to come included with good sounds. So here's one of the patches that I have saved. It's endless, there's a ton of amazing pads, uh, plucks, basses, pretty much anything you can think of is in this synth. Anything you can dream of, you can create it with this one. And here's another huge one. It's super CPU friendly. So what I mean by that is I could have multiple instances of Hive 2 in my session and not worry about my computer crashing. That's huge because some of these software synthesizers are super CPU intensive and that is such a vibe kill if you're in a session and your computer crashes or you have to freeze the audio or whatever no one's got time for that so check out Hive I think it's really powerful this company has a couple other synths that I think are amazing but this one I've really found to be you know if you're looking for like nice modern sounds for hip hop and pop and electronic music this one's very good so another one that is incredibly powerful that needs no introduction that will kind of introduce like a different category of synths is Omnisphere. So Omnisphere is a power synth. It's literally what it says. It's what it what it is. It's super powerful. You can do anything in it if you know how to use it. Uh, that's kind of the main thing. It comes with a ton of presets and honestly it can be way more than what people need. So Omnisphere is a pretty serious uh, musical instrument. There's so many things that it can do. I would say that if you're looking at getting it, you really have to be prepared to learn how to use a lot of different things. It has a bunch of different windows, um, it has crazy menus, it has crazy effects. It, there's so many facets to Omnisphere. It, it can be a little overwhelming, so I'll just give you a disclaimer on that. The preset browser is very, very good. We have plenty of sorting, We have it does everything basically. I'll just show you a couple of pads since I was in kind of like a pad mood. I'll show you some pads that I start here, so check these out. All of these synths that I'm going to show you are, are very capable of making amazing sounds. I think the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to showcase the sounds. I mainly want to just talk about the things that you should be looking for when investing in some of these softwares because I found myself wasting a bunch of money over the years, like not really knowing what to look for. So we want there to be a very good browser, very good included uh, sounds and user-friendly interface. This one's a little goofy because there's all these pages. At least I find it to be goofy, but most people would, you know, this is a pretty industry standard synth. So if you're really serious, check out Omnisphere. It has everything you need. You just need to learn how to use it. So here's another one that's super cool, Arturia Analog Lab. 
So this is going to introduce yet another category of synths, which is essentially like these huge collections that you can buy. They're obviously more expensive. The two main ones are Arturia and Native Instruments. So essentially you buy this collection and you get a bunch of individual synths, and then they also have a plug-in for Arturia. It's called Analog Lab that literally essentially houses all the different sounds in their catalog into one plugin. So you could browse and kind of switch in between different plugins all in one plugin, if that makes any sense. So just to show you kind of what I mean, here's all these different instruments that I have. And also this one's outdated. I think they're on like version seven or eight now. So you'll probably get even more stuff. You can browse by instruments. I find this interface to be like a little bit clunky and slow. I've also just found that this plugin in general is very, very CPU intensive. So if you have computing issues, I would not recommend this. But if you are like an analog gear person like an analog enthusiast or you want to learn more about analog synths and classic sounding synths and that, that kind of stuff this one's amazing it just literally has epic uh sort of like uh, really old interesting synths that uh, you literally would not be able to afford to get the actual hardware so i would say that this one's a little bit slower to navigate but it it has a wealth of sounds some of the coolest uh beats and songs that i've made have started with analog lab patches so that's that one i'm not going to show you sounds and in, in all these because we're just going to be here forever but they all are able to make ri ridiculously incredible sounds so there's no question about that now the competitor to analog lab as i mentioned is um, native instruments so in my favorites, I just have Massive and Massive X. These are included in uh, in the, the uh, Native Instruments uh, Complete collection. And like I mentioned earlier, they have uh, there's a plugin literally called Complete that will house all of these individual plugins if you want to switch between them. But Massive has been like a standard plugin sort of in the 2000s, but I think um, it got overshadowed by Serum in the, like, I, I don't know exactly when, but essentially Massive it was just like it's such a great um synth to learn how to program stuff because it's very very user friendly it has a lot of good presets and you can get a lot of presets online the browser is cool this is a little bit outdated but i just wanted to show you just a little taste of what you could get with the complete bundle now the disclaimer that i have with the complete bundle is that it just has so much stuff i sort of find that there's a little bit of a dichotomy between like quality and quantity I, that might seem like an obvious concept, but yeah, sometimes I find when you buy those huge bundles, you get a lot of stuff that's really kind of weak sounding, but there's a few ones that are good. Unfortunately, Native Instruments plugins are just kind of standard, so you'll probably just end up having them at some point if you end up pursuing production pretty seriously. But if you're a beginner and intermediate looking for like a big bundle of stuff with drums, synths, pretty much anything you need to make songs, um, definitely check out Complete. I have mixed feelings about native instruments. I think that'll be a topic for another video, but um, you know, it, 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 they're fine to get started with that. So Massive is my favorite synth, even though it's pretty outdated. They have a Massive X, which I think is kind of whack, and uh, but you'll get all that stuff in the bundle. So um, Next is an interesting one. This is Nexus by a company called RE Effects. This seems like it would make more sense for people making electronic music, but I don't know, I've made all kinds of songs with this one. Also, this one would be the best if you're super lazy and you don't want to program anything because this is technically a rompler, it's not even a synth. So what that means it's is actually playing, you're not synthesizing uh, sounds from scratch, you're actually playing back um, pre-recorded sounds but it has some amazing patches, like check out some of the, I mean, literally a lot of these sounds are, are quite amazing, but some of them can be a little aggressive. Like I find that it's definitely marketed for more like EDM style producers, like festival, like really heavy electronic, but you can make great hip hop beats and pretty much anything here. So I, I'm, I'm adding it to the list. I just think it's a really user friendly plugin. I think this has a great preset browser and it's very organized with these symbols. Here's a pad. There's a bunch of lovely sounds on here. It's very, very capable of making a bunch of music. Definitely loses some points because uh, it's not a synth, so you can't really dial everything in in great detail. It just gives you kind of a, a few controls over the sound, but um, it's very good. Pigments, I would 
watch out that one is so cpu intensive I, I can barely even run it like literally what's the point make sure you demo these because if it doesn't run on your computer you're just wasting money so i'm not going to pull that up in a session if it might crash my session so i yeah pigments is so lame i wish arturia would figure out their like cpu issues because there's a couple other plugins that i have uh, problems with so um predator by rob pappen this one is kind of outdated and uh, yeah i think that the browser is not great so I, I i'll skip this one but that is a cool synth um serum has become a very standard music production tool for quite a while now this one kind of picked off where I picked up, in my opinion, where Massive left off. It, it sort of used some of these like wavetable uh, style editing features and things. But I just wanted to show you one quick tip with Serum. So I found that the the presets that it came with were pretty bad, but it's really sweet because you can go on Splice and get Serum presets. So I'll just show you some of those. This browser is okay; it gets the job done, but it's not great. I downloaded a bunch of patches on Splice, which is super awesome. It's like you can just you don't even need to program it yourself just you can be super lazy go on splice download a bunch and it just loads up automatically so here's some plucks bunch of cool sounds that you can get serum if you know how to dial it in is just as powerful as any other synth i think all these ones that i mentioned the, the power in them is if you know how to use them super well you can create any sounds that you're thinking of and if you're browsing through presets you can edit any details of them and make them sound the way that you want so Lastly, I did just want to mention um, drum plugins too, which is another thing that comes up. I really think that you should try to learn how to program drums properly in your DAW. I have found that drum sequencers, um, things like Native Instruments, Battery, XO, Atlas, I'm not a huge fan of any of those. I found them to just slow me down. Um, there's there's one exception though, Superior Drummer. Like if you need live drum sounds, you should check out Superior Drummer or Steven Slate Drums um, and Get Good Drums. Those are obviously super useful since you, you, if you're getting a plugin for live drums, that can be like a huge, a huge thing. And another type of plugin that is a little funky. Well, oh, actually, the last thing too is if you need like a drum, a drum synth, like a, an actual. Uh, plugin that synthesizes drums from scratch that can be a reason to get that but for the most part if you're just sequencing like slice samples and stuff I would say learn how to do it in your DAW because they're more than powerful enough to uh, be able to handle that and you really should learn how to organize your samples properly without having to use like an XO or like one of those like AI plugins to do it for you I think it's more helpful just to have your folders really organized so and then I didn't mention too much about bass plugins but it kind of just depends on what genre of music you're doing. But Spectrosonics has one called Trillion. I just think you can make bass in any synth. I don't think you need a synth that's like specialized in bass. Um, like this, I got this program called Sublab that I think is like completely useless. If you're making 808s, just get banging 808s off of Splice and 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 warp those, you know, to the key. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's my spiel about that. I would just say, you know, try to figure out what exactly you're looking for. Do you want quality or quantity? And if you're kind of more of a beginner intermediate producer, I wouldn't hesitate to actually start out just, just getting like, get one plugin and really learn how to use that. Learn how to make every type of sound and learn how to make bells, plucks, basses, lead synths, all of that. And then figure out what you're doing from there. There's no need to feel like you need to buy some crazy $600 bundle of sounds and then five years later they're going to hit you up for an upgrade with an extra fee and you're going to realize wait a minute i don't actually use all these plugins i kind of just regret not just buying like you know one out of 20 of them um so anyway i hope you find this helpful my name is lucas subscribe to my channel if you want some more info on music production and guitar recording stuff i have a bunch of videos and i'm going to keep posting videos and let me know in the comments if you have any ideas about future videos or if you disagree with anything I said or if you have some plugins that you think I totally missed that you find to be super good. So I'm out of here. Later.